This is a DMX6 Fire PCI card. It has the same chips as the Delta 44. I have used these controls here to set the gain for the DMX6 Fire to saturate 0.7 dB above the level that I have as the standard, that is minus 18, where the soft, soft rock starts to go non-linear. Well, if I go above this by 1 dB. Uh, this card uses the same chip as Delta 44, and now I am under Windows 7, and I see glitches, just like I do with the Delta 44. Uh, I have set the S meter to show 18, minus 18 dBm, of course, and I switch off the signal generator, means connect the dummy load to the soft rock, and I have this capacitor here to remove interference that comes from the environment here where there are switch power supplies and other stuff. And now I can read the noise floor, minus 128, that is very good. Uh, it is in the bandwidth of 1 kilohertz, so it means we have minus 158 dBm per hertz. That means that with this sound card, the noise figure of the soft rock is 16 dB. And that is actually a bit better than we need on HF. So it could be a good idea to put an attenuator on the antenna side if there are problems with dynamic range. I am now running under Windows XP 32 bit. There are no glitches, so this seems very similar to the Delta 44. I have moved to Windows XP 32-bit, and here the card works perfectly well, there are no glitches. I had to change the gain setting by 1 dB to make it come uh, close to saturation, like before. And I don't know why, but peculiarities of computers. Anyway, S meter is calibrated to show 18 dB, uh, and that's the level I have on the signal generator. And I switch off the signal generator to find what is the noise floor. And I have to wait a little bit more. Minus 128.25. Uh, that's very close to what I found under Windows 7 but without glitches. I will now connect a better signal generator, a crystal oscillator, and it's here, and the level should be reasonably close to 18 dBm, As we can see here, 18 minus 18.1. The attenuator has 1 dB stepping, so I cannot set it more precisely. What is very clear that we can observe here is that there is reciprocal mixing. These humps here, and generally the noise floor has been lifted. And if I 
look at the noise floor some what is it 10 kilohertz away it is minus 125 dBm so it means reciprocal mixing uh, degrades by about 3 dB this is caused by USB noise and I have a modified box that I will uh, compare with this modified soft rock has two capacitors on the USB section to remove the phase noise from the local oscillator. It also has the capacitor, normally I'm used from here to here, inside the box. The level is now minus 8 dBm. That is 10 dB more than I could send into the original design and I have calibrated the uh, S meter to show minus 8 and then when I switch off the signal generator like that uh, we see the noise floor somewhere could it be 122 or sort of that sort of order I have to wait a little bit more minus 122.6 so there is some noise from the uh, DMX6 fire uh, with a better sound card the noise floor will go down to maybe 128 uh, but for HF I think a better noise figure than this is not needed anyway uh, what I wanted to show mostly was the reciprocal mixing thing I have set the level of the crystal oscillator to minus 18 dBm and this is what the waterfall looks like and I switch off the generator and we can see some little change in the noise floor as you see and I look at the noise floor here uh, where the change was small and put the signal back again and you can see it is a fraction of a dB and if I go to the worst position which is there it is maybe one and a half dB I can now increase the signal level uh, by 10 dB without saturation and then it's obvious that there is again reciprocal mixing but it is strongest fairly close to the carrier if I go uh, 50 kilohertz away like that uh, it is not strong at all I switch off the signal and you can see it's 2 dB maybe so this is very good if you compute the dynamic range from this from minus 8 to minus 120 that is 112 dB but this is 1 kilohertz and the normal dynamic range number is given in 500 Hertz so it is 3 dB better uh, that is 115 dB dynamic range considering the cost of soft rock it is very good I think this is M Audio Revolution 5.1 PCI card. Here I'm using the line input, uh, the margins I have on the amplitude, uh, 6 decibels. 
uh, if I try to send more signal, you can see here, we get these phenomena. They are because of the saturation in the soft rock. And I go one step further and it's not so nice anymore. But we still have 4 dB left uh, before the sound card saturates. So I have taken minus 18, minus 18 as the reference for this series of tests. And again, well, minus 18. And I switch off the generator and the noise floor is low and it's remarkably low uh, since we are not using the 6 decibels on the top. So the dynamic range would be very good if uh, the levels would fit better. This is minus 127.8. This is a Lynx 2. I had an accident with it, uh, feeding far too much voltage into uh, channels 1 and 2, and that destroyed the input amplifiers. So I have removed them and put wires directly to the AD converter, which is sitting here, with some diodes for protection. This is the modified input of Lynx 2. Signal level minus 18 dBm, which you can see also on the S meter. Minus 18. Now switch off the generator like that, and we see the noise floor. It's uh, pretty low, and this is probably mainly the noise of the soft rock itself, not so much the sound card. The level is minus 130.2. The full range of the AD converter is not used. There is a 3 dB headroom up to the point of saturation. That's because the modification I made when destroying the input buffers is that the signal from the soft rocks goes to one side of the uh, balanced input of the AD converter. The other side is just decoupled to ground. So I should feed in the same signal in antiphase on the other side of the AD converter to gain 3 dB more. Uh, and what that would do to the dynamic range, I don't know. With a low noise floor like this, uh, it becomes more visible what this capacitor is doing. I will just lift it away and look here. You can see here is a big signal. It's drifting a little bit. It's about 10 dB loss. And it changes by frequency. I don't know where it originates. But here is another one coming in. When one leaves, the other one comes. And I put the capacitor back. And they go away. I have now connected my modified soft rock, which has a little bit lower gain, so it can tolerate more signals. Uh, the level is minus 8 dBm and that's what I have put also on the S meter and switching off the generator I find the noise floor here 
and there are some irregularities on the noise floor as you can see and it happens I'm at a fairly low point and the level here is minus 128 now I'm looking for reciprocal mixing so I go 20 kilohertz away which is a standard separation. The signal is still minus 8 dBm. And the noise floor is minus 124, something like that. Minus 123 and a half. And if I switch off the strong signal, then we have only the noise uh, from the sound card. So now the system is limited by the local oscillator, probably. That's the SI570. But still, uh, it is a respectable performance. 123. Uh, dB minus 8 that is 115 but then we must remember there is 1 kilohertz bandwidth so it is 145 dBc per hertz that is almost as good as modern uh, direct sampling radios many are not even good as this and if I would replace the local oscillator with a crystal oscillator, the whole thing would be about 5 dB better when the strong signal is present. I have now changed to route channels 3 and 4 to the two first channels which Linrod is receiving. And I have set the S meter to show minus 8. Uh, which is the level we have and then I switch off and now the noise floor is minus 125 and this is with the modified soft rock this one more precisely minus 125.8